So today I was staking up the tomato plants and kind of bragging to myself about how everything looked great, I don't see any pests, and sure enough my hand rubbed against a big tomato hornworm. So, um, well actually what I would have considered at first to be a tomato horn tomato hornworm, but on closer inspection it's a tobacco hornworm, and I'll go over the differences between the two. So anyway, you can see that the hornworm in, at the top of the video is about three inches long when he's fully extended. He's kind of uh, cinched back a little bit, uh, but when he's uh, stretched out, he was three or, or maybe even three and a half inches long, and below uh, the big one is a smaller one, and that one is probably an inch and a half long. and. I mentioned that there's a difference between tomato hornworm and tobacco hornworm. They look very similar, they eat the same things. Generally they're going to be found on tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, tobacco, and potatoes. Uh, you'll notice that the leaves of your plants start getting nibbled away. Uh, maybe your tomatoes have uh, chewing along the edges or your, your leaves have chewing on the edges. So uh, you can probably look around at the tops of your plants and find one of these hornworms. They're very common um, throughout all regions, really. And the other thing to look out for is their waist. So if you look below the, the two inch mark in the video, uh, you'll see actually one of their waist pellets and they yeah they do tend to mound up there's a substantial amount of waste that these caterpillars generate so these really dark green pellets uh and they they get scattered all over your garden bed so if you start seeing these green dots or green pellets uh and then notice that there's the uh, chewing on your foliage and vegetables you probably have the hornworms and uh, they can be three inches, four inches, even five inches long, so they're kind of a shock to see for the first time. Uh, they're completely harmless to people. You can pick them off and uh, discard of them. However, um, I'm not a big fan of, of killing things in the garden um, or using pesticides or anything like that, so I use natural deterrents. Certainly the biological controls like ladybugs, katydids, um, praying mantis, and then the the powdered uh, things like uh, diatomaceous earth, um, also beneficial nematodes. Anyway, I won't get too much into that, but for the hornworms, I mean, the best bet is to just pick them off and feed them to the birds. So I'm not gonna squash these guys. I'm just gonna go put them over in the, the bird feeder. So this is the tobacco hornworm. You can tell because it has the uh, seven white diagonal lines along the edge of the body and along the white lines is a faint uh, black border or an additional line uh, and the horn on the back as you can see from the top caterpillar the large one uh, the, the horn is red and on a tomato hornworm if you look at the sides of the worm, it has eight V-shaped white markings rather than these single diagonal lines. And uh, each of those V-shaped markings uh, does not have the black border like the tobacco hornworm here does. Uh, additionally, the tomato hornworm that I don't have an example of has dark black or, or dark blue horns on the back. So um, that makes this one a tomato hornworm. It comes from the Carolina sphinx moth. So you can Google what a sphinx moth looks like. They're pretty big. And the tomato hornworm uh, comes from the five spotted hawk moth. Uh, again, those are pretty, pretty big, pretty big noticeable uh, moths. If you see those in your yard, uh, chances are good that uh, you'll have hornworms in the, uh, in the next summer. Uh, the um, uh, the caterpillars will uh, feed on your plants for several weeks, up to six weeks, and then they will, um, you know, pupate and, and and do their thing until they hatch next season. Um, 
one thing to look out for if you see hornworms and it have has little rice like uh, protrusions from the body. In other words, if it looks like there are grains of rice sticking out of the body, uh, you could actually leave that hornworm in your garden because it has been parasitized by um, a beneficial uh, wasp. And the wasps are great for the garden. The wasps take care of the hornworms by laying their larvae uh, right on the body of the caterpillar. And then the larvae will hatch and feast on the caterpillar and take care of everything for you. So uh, don't worry about your, your caterpillars if they're being parasitized. Um, in this case, no grains of rice on the body. I'm going to give these ones to the birds and that's all for now. Caterpillars will uh, feed on your plants for several weeks, up to six weeks, and then they will, um, you know, pupate and, and, and do their thing until they hatch next season. Um, one thing to look out for, if you see hornworms and it ha has little rice-like uh, protrusions from the body, in other words, if it looks like there are grains of rice sticking out of the body, uh, you could actually leave that hornworm in your garden because it has been parasitized by um, a beneficial uh, wasp and the wasps are great for the garden. The wasps take care of the hornworms by laying their larvae uh, right on the body of the caterpillar. And then the larvae will hatch and feast on the caterpillar and take care of everything for you. So uh, don't worry about your, your caterpillars if they're being parasitized. Um, in this case, no grains of rice on the body. I'm going to give these ones to the birds and that's all for now.